time we see Michael W. Smith on the open, I wonder, did he write this jingle? Because it's a nice little theme song to our open. I should have asked him that, or I should have asked him to write a jingle. Friends are friends forever if faith and friends is the, <laughs> I don't know. Well, we have, speaking of friends, there. welcome to Faith and Friends. I'm Jennifer Beck along with Andy Lynch, and we have a new friend sitting here. Well, you've kind of been a friend. I've been on and off with the cooking segments. My first time on the show in this environment, though, I'm excited. In the comfy chair. In the comfy You're chair. I was, I was hoping that this does mean that I get to be part of the and friend category from the title. Anyone who brings us food is always a friend, Zach. So you have been <laughs> he a didn't, friend for many generations. He didn't bring us any food today, though. All right, he's off. No, <laughs> you can stay. That, that's OK. <laughs> Next we'll get month. back to the food segments next month. <laughs> That's right. And speaking of next month, I think it's going to be a great month for food. Some national holidays taking place. That it's February cherry. I know that much. Oh, yeah. It's also National Chocolate Month. Uh, I hear rumors of chocolate cake, perhaps. I don't the know. The best cake in the world? The best Is it a chocolate lava cake, cake in the world. I love it when you dig in and that hot chocolate sauce comes. No? It's not today, though. Are you it's hungry not yet? Today. Are you hungry? It's next week. So next week, you have to watch next week because, okay. yes, we're going to have chocolate and chocolate and more chocolate. And chocolate cake. I'm oh, excited. I'm but already bring, this I will week, bring the gallon of milk. This week, we have something far more important than chocolate. Today's Faith and Friends has a focus on education, specifically arts and education. Now, earlier this month, 200 students gathered for the OMEA District 3 Honors Concert. And just last week, more than 600 students gathered to experience a performance of the Cinderella Ballet. We'll take you to both events, but we'll also take a look at the value of arts in education. Also on today's show, what does it mean to be totally surrendered to God? In January is Sanctity of Life Month. These stories and much more up today on Faith and Friends. Well, let's move now, though, to our verse of the day. Music and song, it's hmm. all found in the Bible. Psalm 150, verses 3 through 6 say, Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and pipe. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And guys, I have to admit, I forgot something. I was going to bring my shofar today and let you try to play it. What is that? It's not very exciting to talk about it. Is it a trumpet? A trumped up trumpet? Next week. Next I'm week. Excited. We can talk about no. music two weeks in a row. I think Andy has some hidden musical talents that we don't know about. When I was five years old, I played the xylophone. Oh. And I was hmm. very good at it, I might add. Glockenspiel, actually. At five, you were very good at it. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, a prodigy? Yeah, Savant. apparently, but I didn't practice, so my parents didn't want to pay for lessons. Same thing happened with drums and piano and <laughs> basketball. <laughs> 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 well, over time, there's been plenty of talk about the importance of music in education. It's not hard to find the studies that cite a link between music and arts and better performance in school overall. In fact, at the American String Teachers National Conference, it was stated that students at risk of not successfully completing their high school education were more motivated to stay in school if they were involved in the arts. It was further stated that the arts create a supportive environment, promote constructive acceptance of criticism, and one in which it is safe to take risk. Western Ohio is rich in the arts. Two very clear examples of that taking place in Van Wert in the past few weeks, the most recent at the Nicewanger Performing Arts Center. An opportunity for more than 600 students to watch the Russian ballet perform the well-known story of Cinderella. Classical music, authentic costumes, a seamless storyline, and a visual trip all around the world. Only a few of the things that make an event like that a rich experience for area students. Part of our mission here at the Nicewanger is to inspire, educate, and entertain. Entertainment is not hard to come by too much anymore. Uh, lots of outlets for entertainment. But when it comes to education and inspiration, I think that's where it's really important that we, we do that. I was thinking as, as the kids were watching the ballet today that they really need to use their imaginations. They, there was no word spoken. They, some of them knew the story of Cinderella, but they had to imagine what was going on and fit the music to the movements and everything that's going on on the stage and let their imaginations do the walking. And, and uh, I don't think we get to peak kids' imaginations and curiosity as much as we do because we're always after the science and maths. And so the arts is what really activates an imagination. 
It truly was an opportunity for imagination at last week's Russian ballet performance, one that the several hundred who saw the performance will likely not soon forget. Um, it was kind of neat because since I take, I like know what they're doing, and it was just really beautiful. I did like Cinderella and that girl who had the white dress. I like the last part where, she, where she's a slave and she meets where she gets the shoe back. Love hearing from kids on TV. Aren't they great? They just say what they're feeling. We were all more like children in some respects. Well, there are many examples of music in the Bible. Verses that talk about angels singing their praises to God. Verses encouraging us to sing to our Heavenly Father in prayer and praise. A local art teacher, Amanda Richard, who attended the Russian ballet performance of Cinderella, shares her thoughts on how we are to use the arts. The um, importance of music and art and education is so that our children can see how we can glorify God through our beauty and through the talents that he has given us whether it be painting or drawing or um, beautiful movements with our, with our body that um, we can um, express ourselves and our love for Christ um, to the culture around us and impact him for his glory. Someone who also agrees with that sentiment was the guest choir conductor at the recent OMEA District 3 Honors Festival. Dr. Robert Toshif is a professor of music at Mount Vernon Nazarene University. While he's very active with state and national choir associations, he is also very active in his church. He's the choir director at Mount Vernon Lake Holm Church of the Nazarene. For the 2014 OMEA concert, his song selections reflected his spiritual heritage, including Praise the Lord, Hallelujah by Bach, Rockin' My Soul on African American Spiritual, Noel, and Let There Be Peace on Earth. During the recent OMEA concert, I asked Dr. Toshif about the faith message in the music. Sacred music is, is just a part of music development from early on, so it, it's part of uh, music history, so I, I don't apologize at all for that. But certainly you're right, it's, it's what I deal with uh, most, uh, so uh, I'm not ashamed of it, and I think the kids really kind of bought into it, and I think many of them um, uh, experience the faith as well. As we first talked about last week, January is National Book Month, and when it comes to books, we want to encourage you to select the Bible as your book of choice every single day. Now, last week, we offered our three tips to help form that habit. Do you remember them? Do you remember? I do. Zach I think I remember attention. one. Remove distractions is the number one. What do you remember? I was going to say remove okay, distractions. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the first one. <laughs> well, that's a good one to remember. want to remove those distractions. Choose a regular time for reading and begin and end your Bible reading time with prayer. This week we have three more tips to keep to transform your Bible reading into a solid habit. The first tip of the day, you ready? Write it down, get your pen out, journal what you read. You could write this tip right at the top of your journal perhaps. Journal what you read. What comes to mind as you read the scriptures? Not only will journaling help you process your thoughts better, but it's a great to be able to look back and see what God has been telling you. Very good tip there. It's Zach? nice. Go ahead. I was going to talk about journaling. But. Well, I found particularly journaling to be, journaling to be helpful, uh, as you mentioned there in the end, that you can look back and see at the particular situations you were in at the time and be able to look back and see how God was working in those situations. So journaling, a very valuable too when it, tool when it comes to that. I took a sermon writing class, and it was very interesting that the, the hand-to-paper motion mm. triggers things in your brain. We're so used to typing or texting or whatever, but we're losing part of the creative process by not writing things down on paper. So it really does help expand both your mind and, and your physical action of writing. Very interesting. Very, very important to remember in today's society. Uh, certainly. Well, our next Bible reading tip of the day, ask questions. First, ask God. Ask Him what He wants to reveal to you through the passage and then ask another Christian friend that you trust. Don't be scared to ask. You know, sometimes we don't want to step forward and ask things, but God put us here together in a community for a reason so that we can learn more. And finally, take time to understand. You know, there's some great one-year Bible reading plans. But don't feel pressured to rush through the Bible that quickly. Now, following a schedule is a great thing, and we do encourage that if it's something you need. But all in all, understanding what you read is the most important. There's a time in my life where I read the same passage every day for 30 days because apparently God wanted to teach uh -huh. me something through it. What was the passage? It was James. It was uh, James 1. I read okay. the set chapter yep. every day for 30 days. And that is wow. a chapter that we all try and master <laughs> and it is a good one to remind ourselves over and over again. Remember you can find not only these reading tips but our late, uh, last week's tips as well at our website WTLW.com.
Today's Hope Focus segment takes us to the topic of surrender. In a country of rampant individualism and a society built on self-reliance, the last notion of our heart is wholesale surrender. Yet the Word of God tells us the only way to truly save our life is to lose it. Bill Harris of Rapture Ministries is preparing a four-part series on this topic. I caught up with Bill to learn the importance of surrender and how exactly we go about losing our lives. Well, Bill, happy to be talking to you again. Of course, last time we had the opportunity to discuss a few of your upcoming shows. We're going to do that here again as you're preparing to start a, a, a four-part series coming up yes. uh, discussing the total surrender yes. to God and, and what that all entails. So we'll dive here into that in a minute. But I wanted to ask you first, surrender, especially wholesale surrender, why? Mm -hmm. uh, at first glance, it's not something that we really uh, is appealing towards us. Yeah. But what's the importance for us as Christians, that whole total surrender to God? Well, first of all, Zach, God is talking to me. <laughs> and then as he talks to me, then he has me to share the message with others. But we can't realize our total potential. We can't realize all of what God has purposed for us in life if we don't surrender all. Mm. And when we're not surrendering, we're doing our own thing. It's either the body, soul, or spirit that's, take, that's taking off on its own agenda, and it takes us away from what God has already planned for us. So the total surrender brings us in total alignment with His will. And His will is filled with nothing but good things. Not to say that we don't have challenges in life. Yes, we will. Mm. But we're overcomers when we allow Him to supersede everything else. Okay, well, you break the... The whole total surrender into four different parts, uh, body, mm -hmm. spirit, soul, and then ultimately spiritual warfare. Yes. Let's talk about the first part, the body. Okay. I, and I've seen, I've seen a little bit of how you break that down when you do discuss those three parts. The significance of the body. Let's talk about the that. The significance is, well, you know, you have, uh, you have the five senses, the hearing, seeing, tasting, touching, and smelling. This is what God has given us to help us to navigate throughout the natural world. Sometimes um, the body, because the body is not... Uh, been redeemed. It is our spirit that's been redeemed. The body wants to continue to do its own thing. And so the Bible has a, a scripture where it talks about the flesh and the spirit conflicting against each other and, th and they're antagonistic to each other because the body wants drugs. The body wants illicit sex. The body wants to, to talk about gossip and all these other kinds of things. And the spirit is trying to get us to walk and live holy. So that's why we have to bring the body under God's domain so he can cause us to behave. Sure. And so how do we do that? How, when we're focusing on the body, those fleshly impulses, yeah. how do we battle against that? And that's what they are, fleshly impulses. And what God tells us to do in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, yes. you know, holy and acceptable unto God, and which is our reasonable service. Now, when we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, it means it's perpetual. When you look at the Old Testament, and they used to sacrifice animals. Every now and then they would sacrifice animals for their sins and the like. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that animal worship system has been done away with. Now we are the temple of God. And now we need to mortify, which means kill, mortify our flesh. So we're lying ourselves on that altar. Yeah. And uh, we are committed to Christ and we are at the cross. Another scripture says we, we um, mortify the flesh by crucifying ourselves. The cross is an instrument of death. Mm. The altar is an instrument of death. Our body has to die out to the things of the world and its own cravings and desires. And to do that, we have to say no to it. And God helps us with that. Well, and I've heard you mention saying no to those impulses and something that we can't do on our own. No. And we certainly try to deny ourselves, but ultimately it takes a spiritual uh, it does. element to it. It does. And, and, and let me say this to encourage our audience that when, because we're frail human beings, we have times where we fail, but the blood of Jesus is there to deal with whatever you've done. Some people have not forgiven themselves for yes. sins they've committed for years ago. You haven't committed yourself, but Christ forgave you over 2,000 <laughs> years ago. There is enough power in the blood of Jesus to deal with whatever you did that was a sin, mistake, or whatever you want to call it. Really okay, is. and that, let's say if you're sitting at home, that, that all sounds great. You certainly want that, and that's something um, that you know needs to happen. But what are some practical elements that can help us to deny the body. Very deny good, impulses. good question. I think for one thing, if you know that there is a certain sin that bothers you a lot, you have to stay away from that. Because if you kind of ease up to that just to see how far you can yes, go, yeah. you're opening the door for Satan to come in and take you to the next level. 
So we have to be honest and open about ourselves. You know, I've heard, I've, I've talked to Christians who used to gamble. I, I have a brother-in-law who used to, he never saw a lottery ticket he didn't like. I mean, mm -hmm. he always believed yes. that he could win, you know? Right. And so what he does now, he doesn't go. He doesn't go to the store where they have the lotteries and like, he doesn't go to gambling casinos and things because he knows that that was the thing that God had delivered him from. Yes. You know, same thing with a person that does drinking and the like. You don't want to sit there in a bar if you know you were an alcoholic and you're trying to, right. you know, rid yourself of that. It's, it, it can be very calm and very practical. Yeah, so placing yourself in the environment can set you up for failure. Yes, it can. You, you yes, want to avoid. Can. Okay, well, the first part was the body that we're discussing. There's a second part to it as well in this, in this four-part series. Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. The second part is about the soul. And just like I described uh, the, the five parts of the, bo of the body being the, uh, the five senses, in the soul you have the mind, the will, and the um, emotions. Mind, will, and emotions. And you could umbrella it by calling it like the, the intellect of man. And we see situations in society today where, let's take the mind for instance. The Bible says that the, the, the fool has already said in his heart there is no God. There is this thinking, there's this mindset in the world that there is no God or that we are gods or that the, uh, the environment or the universe is God. And so there's a lot going on to deny God, deny his existence or mm -hmm. to say he's dead or whatever. And then when you look at the will, God wants to redirect our will because we are free agents. We have a right to do what we want to do. But God wants to redirect our will, but he won't do it unless you agree to it. Yes. And so when we come to him, that total, a part of that total surrender is giving him the mind, giving him the will. And then the emotions, we know what happens when our emotions are outside of God's control. We can become irrational. We can say or do things we don't mean to say. Mm -hmm. God wants to be in control of our emotions. I, I, I tell people very often that God wants the major aspects of your life. He wants the minor aspects of your life. And he wants the minutiae. He mm -hmm. wants it all. It yeah. was total surrender. Well, you've heard just a little bit of how we go about total surrender to God, beginning with the body and soul. If you would like to hear more from Bill, tune in to Update with Bill Harris this Sunday at 1.30 or Wednesday mornings at 9. Now let's take a look at some of the upcoming events in the region. Andy and Jennifer. Thank you, Zach. Healthy you and a matter of balance. Those are two key topics getting special focus next month by the Area Agency on Aging 3. The Healthy You Chronic Disease Self Man Go ahead and say that word for me. Management program. Oh, there's no T. My <laughs> bad. It runs February 4th through March 7th. I thought that was some kind of special <laughs> test, and I didn't want to mess it up. February 4th through March 11th, the Mercer County Senior Center classes are free. Registration is required. A matter of balance managing concerns about falls is another one of those programs. It starts February 6th and runs through March 27th at Trinity United Methodist Church here in Lima. Again, classes are free, but registration is required, so call the number on your screen to register for either of these classes. Definitely mark your calendars and plan to attend the 2014 Transport for Christ Annual Banquet. This year's events, February the 21st at the Marbeck Center at Bluffton University. No cost once again, but a free will offering will be collected. All donations going towards the Second Chance Chapel in Beaver Dam. The Pipers are this year's musical entertainment. For more information, call 419-230-3294. And January is Sanctity for Life Month. And possibly you've seen an episode of our Surrender the Secret series, which has been airing. In addition to that series, we've been having special interviews with Sherry Neuenschwander. Well, in honor of life, we'll take a few moments now and hear Sherry talk about the importance of healing after abortion. Abortion recovery uh, programs such as Surrendering the Secret or ours, which is Concepts of Recovery, the Journey, is very vital, giving women and men that opportunity to grieve because once we grieve and acknowledge what we've done and come a strong voice, we can win this battle for life. And um, our nation is be has been crushed by the uh, abortion industry. I mean, generations have been lost as a result yeah. of abortion. And they're in the abortion industry and they, you know, they have strong voices, but we have a strong God, Absolutely. amen? Yeah. And so, you know, that's why my heart is just for the church. We talked about, you know, the pastors getting involved. Everybody needs to get involved because uh, there are many who are hurting and we need to bring them to the table of forgiveness so we can work together as a team. You know, you want to change our nation and stop abortion? Help those who are healing, who are hurting from abortion heal. Reach out to them, 
help us to become a voice. When, you, when it comes to abortion, you have two victims, one, the baby that lost his life, but also the wounded heart of the mm -hmm. woman or the man that experienced the pain of abortion. So we have a lot of wounded people, yeah. you know, that's walking around that is in need of just to be told that not only God loves them and can mm -hmm. forgive them, but to understand that it is a grief that needs to be processed and have the opportunity to do that in a safe, healthy manner and that's what abortion recovery does gives you an opportunity to grieve and process that grief in a healthy biblical manner mm -hmm. um, ours is all based on on the bible and it's a safe place and once we do that our nation can be changed as a whole because you, people get healthy in mind body and spirit mm -hmm. and you, you can't do that unless you acknowledge what you've done repent and allow yourself to have that opportunity to grieve. Watch Jennifer's entire interview with Sherry Neuenswander anytime by visiting our website, WTLW.com. Well, not long ago, I had an opportunity to talk with a young lady who was really inspiring. I've had the privilege of watching her about the past decade grow into a beautiful young woman and quite an amazing leader. This week's OIO Faith on the Field segment introduces you to Lima senior swimmer, Quincy Livchak. It's her final season on the Lima Senior Swim Team, and Quincy Livchek has her eye on the 100 butterfly. Uh, last year I broke the record for our school at one of our home meets here at the end of the season, and the record was set, I think, in 99, and it was a 105.82, and I just barely got it with a 105.02. This year, Livchek hopes to break her own record, plus a few other things she and her coaches hope to achieve. I know uh, one of her goals is to uh, make state in the 100 butterfly and uh, more working with her on that. Um, she also swims I am quite a bit and you know hopefully we'll you know see her do pretty well in that. But when you talk about live check you can't just talk swimming. Quincy is a leader, captain of the swim team both her sophomore and junior years. This senior swimmer finds joy in more than just success at the meet. Well, and the leadership experience that it's brought is really interesting like being able to lead a team of people who have never ever swam before by the end making it to districts in a relay and seeing how they've changed and how their growth has like shown it's kind of like a reflection on how I helped as a captain a little bit because I see how great they've how far they've come and it's really neat. She she's a quiet leader. She just leads by action. Um, she's just one that everybody wants to be like and you know if I had a team full of Quincy's we'd probably be undefeated. Livchek's leadership ability is impacting more than just her teammates. Livchek also volunteers at her church, Shawnee Alliance, is very active with Allen County 4-H, and is helping start a potentially life-changing program at Lima Senior High School. We're starting an FCA group in our school, a chapter, I guess, and um, one of my friends from school is starting that, and he's chosen me to be one of the leaders, so that's a new experience that I've never been a part of, so it'll be, it'll be a challenge just to see how everything goes and it's starting, but it, I'm excited for that. And one more highlight for the senior swimmer, younger sister Gabby, shown in the yellow cap, is a freshman, giving the siblings one high school season to swim together. Quincy Livchak hopes to swim at a Division II or Division III school in the fall, and wherever she goes, her leadership ability will surely be an impact. Always great to hear about young people doing incredible things. Well, the Super Bowl is this Sunday, and of course, it means big things for the Wilson Football Factory in Ada. I took my annual visit there to watch the process in action and need to see this year that Ada is sending both the footballs and a quarterback to the big game and the Big Apple. It's the most awesome thing in the world because he's the, probably the most humble kid I've ever met in my life. I mean, he's just uh, the kid, the next kid you want next door or your daughter to marry right there. That's the kind of kid he is. Jenkins grew up with Dysert's dad, and the families were always at sporting events together. He knew he was special because I can remember when they played soccer, they were seven and eight years old. Zach made sure everybody on the team scored a goal for the season. Really? Yeah, he, he made sure. Then he was probably like 12 years old, he decided to get on the swim team. Never swam before. By championships, he won five medals. So he just a uh, wonderful They bought the bowling alley. Within months, he could bowl 200 games. Just the type of kid he is. Just a great, just a great kid, a great asset to Ada. Each of the game balls goes through numerous hands and machines to get it ready to ship to both the Broncos and the Seahawks. 
And then thousands of footballs are made and sold to the public as collector's items. But before the footballs head out, they have to pass one final test. We look at every part of the ball. We look at the leather, the stamping. We clip off threads. We straighten the laces. And this one's a little dirty, so we're going to have to clean it. It's all clean. And that's a good ball. Everyone at Wilson will get to watch their workmanship Super Bowl Sunday and also know that a hometown boy is on the sideline. It's just great to know that we got somebody from A to finally. I mean, how many kids make it to the NFL? Hardly any. And to bring a ring home would be even be icing on the cake. Be great. There it is, the official <laughs> Super Bowl football from Wilson. Pretty cool to see that process. Yeah, did you help make it? Did no, you? I did a few years ago, but not this year. I just got the one in the box. No. And Do you have plans for the football is the big question. What kind of plans should I have? Put through know, college. Go to the backyard, maybe toss a few around. In I fact, don't know. I don't maybe we'll do that when we get off set here. It's in the box. Play some though. football. <laughs> Who knows? Big plans. I don't think I'm getting it back. Now. <laughs> we, we bring him on the show. He we tell him he's our friend. And I get a football for it. This is exciting. We have so many friends out there that we want to thank for helping us in our campaign drive. Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Lehman in Burn, Indiana, an individual gift. Thank you so much for being a part of TV44. Joanne Boutwell, also for a fall campaign pledge. And Daniel and Diane Wellman from Coldwater down in Mac Country, state football champs. Thank you so much for being a part of TV 44. We sure are thankful. I want to say thanks to Nolan Jones of Columbus Grove for your generous donation, Jack Black and Debbie from Lima, and also Larry and Marion Sprague of Lima as well. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Also want to thank Alice and Charles Overly for your generous donation, and, and Dorothy Gerlock out of St. Henry, as well as Cindy Himmelgarn, who has to say she supports 40, TV 44 because it is awesome, and Andy and the guys or she loves them. Well, thank <laughs> and they're you. great to watch. She, she is great. She is She's a big friends. cold water. She is yes. one of our friends. Big supporter. Her granddaughter played softball a few years ago. So. All right. Well, coming up fun. next week, February is chocolate month. Mm. Starting off the first two weeks with chocolate food we cake. Have Buckeyes. I see Buckeyes on the screen. The peanut butter filled chocolate. Oh, I love them. Well, that's part of next week as well. But no, it's not the kind you eat. <laughs> Let's see what we can whip up. Maybe, maybe that'll... Our food friend will be back. <laughs> and let's close out the time look, taking a look at our verse of the day. Psalm 150, verses 3 to 6. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the pipe. Praise him with the... I don't have it memorized. Clash, ah, of, clash symbols. of symbols. There we go. Praise him with the resounding symbols. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And Love we, that. We end with that. We encourage you to praise the Lord. Remember, you can go to our website, WTLW.com, to re watch any of these segments. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Zach, for being with us. Glad to be here. You're a good we'll friend. See you again Zach. next Thank week. Thank you.